Hello and welcome to the Command Center. I am your host, Full Blood Mex, and my co-host is the Red Martian. Hello. And with us today, we have Devster. Hello. So a couple days ago, I read a post by the user AG Daha stated that the devs of War Thunder made a stream and answered a whole bunch of questions. The first one being that they believe that the Object 906 is balanced. If you don't, if you guys don't re remember, the 906 recently got a buff where its reload from went from six seconds to four seconds, and they th will think about changing its BR. Um. Well, it's already had the BR change to but, seven three, but I mean. I don't find it as bad anymore, especially since they added hole break to it. If it um, didn't have hole break and it had that four second reload, then it would really be a problem. I still find it cancer though, because whenever I, I mean, take I out- I find it cancer too, because it's over spammed, it's got a stabilizer and all that mess. At 7.3 with that 4.3 second reload. Honestly, I think it should, like, it's 4.3 reload should be with the ace crew, not stock. Agreed. But- Whenever I spam out my Centurion Mark 10, I always get banned by that thing. I can never seem to counter it. I mean, it's got it's got 230 millimeters of penetration. 102. Wait, how is he able to pin you? He, I don't is know. He pinning your frontal plate? Yeah. He's probably using heat FS then. Which is bull. <laughs> if he's using AP, if he's using AP CBC, that that would no, I couldn't understand that. But with heat FS, I could. Cause it's got 149 at 60, and your effective is only like, your your front plate's only 120 angled. At I can't remember, but its effective is I I did the math before, but I lost it. Do you think they'd move it up to like 8.0 battle rating or like 7.7? No. Nah, 8.0 uh, is think, too high. I think if they moved it, it would probably be it would probably be 7.77 seven, seven, seven if they moved it again. So 72.4 plus, uh, hold on, 128. Yeah, he wouldn't be able to go through your frontal plate. Yet even, he... even even in the Centurion Mark III, he wouldn't be able to go through it. But you know, Russian bias. Yeah. <laughs> plus he the best. So the second thing is that Gaijin has announced the, that the T-62M is coming soon to the game. Wait, T62M? I thought it was the BV. Uh, that's for the T64 variant. Wait, T62M. But... Okay, I have to Google this now. Hold on. Sam. <laughs> oh, jeez. What? So, right? That's, that's like a T64! <laughs> <laughs> what the f- No, oh, that's- no. No, 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 no. If you're gonna add that, you might as well add the T80. Jesus Christ, dude. That's like a T64. That the BR for that's going to have to be 9.0. It's going to have to be because one, it has an auto loader. It's going to have composite, and I'm sure it's going to have much better armor than the dude, currently yeah, existing look at all that 262. Armor on it. The turret is thick. Thick look at the with steel two Cs. On it. Like like they they basically took like another frontal plate. Uh-huh. And just slapped it onto the frontal plate that was already there. Kind of like the T26 Super Pershing. They kind of did it that way. Like, they just, they welded another plate to it. But the difference is, the Pershing sucks. No. Pershing does not suck. It does. I mean... I think the Pershing needs a lower BR. I think it needs to be 6.3. It does not need to be in the heavy line. It should come right after the original Pershing. No, 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 no. It needs to be in the heavies. You think so? Yeah, it definitely needs to be in the heavies. The cause the M twenty six Pershing is total garbage compared to the Super Pershing. Plus the Super Pershing is a heavy tank. The even the M twenty six Pershing was classified as a heavy tank from the United States Army. They sure. even cla they classified it as a heavy tank at the time because well it was the most heavy armored tank that they had. The things that they considered medium was the Shermans. Anything above 34 or 38 tons was considered a heavy. The M26 was 41.6 and the Super Pershing is 49.9. Yeah, but this was back in World War II where... Yeah. 
they didn't really use heavies that often. No. I think the only heavy that the allies truly used was the... Yombo. Uh, that yeah. and the Churchill. I mean, they... Yeah, they Churchill. The Americans used the T-26 basically at the very end of the war. Yes. Because when? it could burst King Tigers and survive. Because yes. that was the biggest threat at the time. So? And... And what? Uh, I just... Honestly, if they don't fix the BR compression, they need to make it a lower BR. Because it is complete trash at 7-7. At seven, seven. Yes. It can't pin anything. It can't take shots. It can't do anything. I agree. It makes it makes it's so sad too because they recently buffed it. Like they recently buffed the frontal armor to where it's actually spaced. Yeah. Instead of whatever it was before. But oh well. You can't use that buff anymore though because it's versing seven seven tanks. I think what they should do is they should have two separate tiers. They should have World War Two tiers and Cold War tiers. World War Two late World War Two vehicles, aka post war, mm -hmm. cannot fight uh war vehicles or pre war vehicles. So, so like the T the so like the T twenty nine and stuff, that's fine. I mean that's post war, but it's like at the very end of World War Two. And it's a World War Two tankish thing. It, they made it to kill the King Tigers. The T thirty two, that can stay. Anything above the M48 and M103 needs to be in Cold War. So you were saying like the T29 was designed for World War Two, not for life. Yeah, it was. It was designed for World War Two, but it was too late to the fight. Mm -hmm. It right. was designed like why? Like that's why it was so OP against the King Tigers at first, because that's how it would have been in real life. Yeah, that cannon would just obliterate through the frontal armor yeah. of those tigers. Yeah, and they couldn't. And they, I mean, the King Tigers could. Uh, they would have a harder time going through the frontal plate. But I mean, overall, honestly, I think post-war tanks that were designed for World War II periods are okay, but anything that was designed after World War II is not okay. This thing was designed before, but it wasn't built till after, so technically I wouldn't count it as a post-war vehicle. Mm. I, I agree, actually. 100%. Like, the T-30 heavy tank, that's a post-war vehicle. Same chassis as the T-34-T-29, but it was made and designed after World War II. Agreed. So, that's that's how I feel Gaijin should do it, but, you know. Uh, they're not going to listen. Yeah, they're not going to listen. They don't care. So, here's the biggest news that I think will come within the next patch. Helicopters will be introduced to all countries. They now Ugh. they will not begin with the first rank, but for each country they found at least two machines to incorporate into into the ranks. So is it a separate tree? Or is it like where would it be? Just a it, whole new line? No, it's probably gonna be in the aviation line. Well yeah, but is it just gonna be a whole different like you know, tech, tech line, tree? Yeah, you know what? They might put it to like the left of the fighters. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. Because on all the countries, there's a pretty big wide open space right there. That'd and be kind of weird, though. It'll definitely be in rank 5. But now, but actually, they might put it in the tank line. I because think they will put it in the tank line. you're not going to use that in ARB battles, and plus, like... Unless they enable it, or if it's like a certain game And mode, not but... not a lot of people have jets either. <clears throat> yeah. Not a, not a lot of people have top per, top tier... Uh, planes so it's I think what they might do with it is they'll attach it to the rank 6 top tier vehicles and they'll make the requirements the same as your first rank 6 you have to have three vehicles of rank 5 unlocked to research it I think that would be fair I think mm -hmm. that would be very reasonable <clears throat> so in accordance with helicopters being introduced into the game they will introduce stronger self-propellant anti-aircraft guns, including an anti-aircraft missile system. Whoa. Okay. So we're going to have... Here's the problem with the anti-air system. First of all, how are they going to do that? Second of all, yeah. there's there's a lot of different types of missiles with different ranges and such on. Like, there's different types of missiles too. There's 
there's a there's radiation, there's laser, yes, and then there's heat. What are they gonna add? I think it's gonna be heat because this goes on to the next point because they said that uh, prototypes of night vision devices and thermal imagers are gonna are being developed. So in accordance with that, they're gonna implement that with the tanks along with the stronger anti-aircraft for countering helicopters, I believe. Hmm. See, so are they going to add countermeasures for the helicopters? Are they going to add flares? Are they going to add chaff or, like, ECM jammers? What are they going to do about that? I don't know, but I think the most logical would be the what you said, chaff and flares to counteract the, that or just be a good pilot and dodge your way through those missiles. Yeah, I, honestly, I think what they might do with the missiles is they might make it to where for a certain range it'll be lock on. Like, for instance, a kilometer from the target, it'll auto guide itself from there. But you have to guide it to the target first. You have to guide it to that kilometer and then it takes over. So just like a guided missile, pretty much? Kind of like an ATGM, but it takes over after after it's a kilometer away from the target. Or it could so that be... Way, that, way, that way it's, you know, it's actually, you know, fun for the SPA players, because I don't think it would be fun to just sit there and launch missiles all day. You know what? I, mean, I think I this is... literally not have to worry about it. I think it would be a lot more fun to actively guide the missile to the target and then it do the rest of the work when it gets close. You know what? I think this is what the uh, Silent Thunder... April Fools was about because if you played it, you could c take control of the torpedoes. So why not yeah, just that, do that yeah, for a missile? But that was that was kind of different though because it didn't auto lock on after it got close to the target. True. But I feel like with some tweaks, they could easily make it that it could lock onto a target. Mm -hmm. Honestly, with that April Fools event that they had a while back with the modern tanks and the helicopters, mm -hmm. I think they had the helicopters right, but not. Perfect. No. Uh, for instance, the missiles. Like, you could literally just sit at the spawn and launch missiles. Yep. They're they're definitely gonna have to put a range on that. Um, I believe that range should be s between six and eight kilometers would be a reasonable distance. Cause you can't sit at your spawn. You actually have to go out into the battlefield where you where you can encounter SPAA, but safe enough to where, you know, the SPAA can't just one tap you. Yeah. Okay, so I already told you this, Martian. The IS-7 will be introduced this year. <sighs> <laughs> that sigh of uh, disappointment. More Russian bias. Great. Yeah. My my thing is, what are they gonna do with it? What PR are they gonna put it at? What are they gonna face it against? I feel What's the three load gonna be. It, Knowing Gaijin, it's gonna be like eight point seven. Huh? I said knowing Gaijin, it's gonna be most likely like eight point seven. It's gonna come right after the IS four, or either that, or they're gonna make it a premium. I don't I think, think they should make. It. It. I don't think they should make it a premium, because that's too easy. People will buy it. That, like, that are in rank one. Well, that's what they, they did with the IS-6. So you actually have to work for it. I agree, but that's what they did with the IS-6. And the Object 120. And the Object 120. See, but those, honestly, those tanks are nothing compared to the IS-7. The IS-7 has armor and a gun. Kind of like the IS-6, but difference is it's 130 millimeters and it has an auto loader and it can also go 60 kilometers an hour it should um it should be like just a normal tank but yeah it should be a it is gaijin so they could i think just... it, i think it's a grindable that you should have to earn your way to because if you just buy it that's stupid <clears throat> and that's absurd but you know gaijin's probably gonna do that because it's gonna be the only way that they're gonna be able to make money most likely but it's that's exactly what they did with the IS-6 and the Object 120. They were like, this is how we're going to make money. Instead of putting it in the actual tech tree, where people have to grind their way for it, how about we just make it pay to win? Because, you know, Gaijin needs all the money. 
I realize that it's a free game, but yes. at this point, the pay to win is just getting ridiculous. It is getting a little ridiculous because they right... they fixed so many things. Yes. So many things. The only thing that they have not fixed is the matchmaker. That's the biggest, biggest issue right now is the matchmaker. If it wasn't for the BR compression of one, it, it you know, everything would be fine. Like, exactly kind of how they did it back in the day with the tier system, how only vehicles in that rank fought vehicles in that rank, not the BRs. Yeah, honestly, I missed the tier system. I don't like this but, but PR there are system. Some tanks, there are some tanks that will benefit and that will be overpowered if that happens. Say, for instance, the IS-3. It's sure. a rank 5. Versing rank 5s, it will get destroyed. Versing rank six, uh, rank 4s, it will be overpowered. Hmm. So what do you do I with that? I see your point. Yeah, because like, I've played the IS-3 in a down tier versing King Tigers. There are people who know how to kill it. You know, it's not unkillable, but... The thing that I'm thinking about is not the new, is not the the players who've been playing the game for a while. It's the new players. You got to think about the new players, not the old players. Yeah, it's got to be a that's, lot more that's, harder that's for. That's how I think that they should do games, because they're making it built towards the the um, older players. That way, they don't lose them. Instead of gearing it towards the new players, that way they can't build their player base even more. Yeah. People people get over themselves. You know, people who really like this game, like me, for instance, I have 2,386 hours. Imagine completely flips this game around. I probably won't stop playing it. That is true. I have sunk so much time and money into this, I'm not just going to stop playing it because, oh, they changed the BR or changed the reload or completely removed the vehicle from the game. I'm, I'm not one of those people. I'm going to play the game because I like to play the game. So on like, to the next point. They said that they are working on Italian tanks. Finally. Yeah, for real. It's. I feel like they should have implemented Italian tanks with the French. Yeah, I, they think th I think that they added France because they were already working on France. Uh-huh. And the guy who was giving them info on the Italian tanks passed away. So what? they were like, there's nothing we can do about the Italian tanks for right now. Plus, the Italians didn't really do much. I mean, their P-40 was like the heaviest tank they ever made. Yeah, compared to the other Axis powers and the Allies, their tanks were very crude. Even compared to the Japanese. Which is saying something, because the Japanese tanks are very very mm -hmm. crude i think i think what they should do with with the italians is they should give them vehicles from other countries if that's to, the case to a certain point you know like the m26 yeah that's fine i but just I'm talking about like top tier vehicles because i imagine they don't use their own i just I imagine don't... they didn't build their own I just don't uh, want to see it italy become usa 2.0 where they get most yeah. of the American tanks, even though well, they should have uh, like similar looks to Germans because they're allies and they probably shared, you know. Yeah, you know what? That's looks. what they should do. They should give them German vehicles for their World War II stuff, give them some Japanese mixed in there too, and then for their top tier vehicles, give them a little bit of everything. Give them some British, give them some Japanese, give them some German, give them some Russian. Like, I think they could do it, I think they could make it work. If that's the Honestly. case, they might as well implement China, because <laughs> China. China. Even though, yeah, China used a lot of the Soviet tank tree, uh, tech line. They, mm -hmm. I feel like that with the inclusion of China, it is gonna even out this whole NATO versus just the Soviet Union into uh, RV and Sim. Because right now, not a lot of people are playing Russia in high tiers because they're all alone. And yeah, it, they get uh, Germany. All alone. They most they fight with Germany all the time. I mean, in Sim. Oh, cause, oh yeah, well, because that's how it is in real life. Yeah, but... Simulistic it, battles. It's everyone versus Russia in real life. That's how it still is, and it'll never change, I don't think. So I don't know why Gaijin has to be so salty about it. 
That is true. Like, who cares? You're getting you're getting burst by everyone. That's how it is in real life, buddy. You were on our side in World War Two, and you, you know, after that, you kind of just went your own direction, and we went our own direction, and you're pissed off at the world for whatever reason. So, the next point is huge, in my opinion, because I think this is really bad. It's the Abrams ammunition load will be revised. The reload speed may be reduced due to the speed of the ammo door opening. The explosion of ammunition, ammunition and the damage to the ammo doors will destroy the tank. When the ammo rack is damaged and all the shells, all the shells will disappear. This change will be in the game soon. Ammunition on fire cannot be put out with a fire extinguisher. Tower with a burning ammo rack will have to turn away from the engine compartment to avoid fire and wait for the fire to be over. Okay, so it's going to be an automatic system now. Like it is in real life. Sort of, kind of. Is that what they're saying? Sort of. So it's saying that if you're... If a dart from either an enemy tank hits the back of your turret and it goes through the ammo and pierces the ammo door, it's going to kill your tank. Which what makes sense. You know how in real life there's that uh, blast door that the Abrams has, so when you open... Oh, you're talking about the 38mm thing? Yes. The 38mm plate between them and the ammo? Yes. Okay, yeah, so but I mean, I've been hit there before and it's blown me up, so... Were you carrying heat FS? No, I was carrying all strictly APFSDS and it still blew me up. Really? Mm-hmm. It blew me up in one shot. It didn't, it didn't set me on fire or anything. I died instantly. Hmm. So, and actually, I've had that happen before, but no, it didn't even hit that. It just, it went into the crew compartment, and some of the spall, I guess, went through the 38 millimeter plate and set the ammo up. Hmm. I guess the spall can kind of squeeze its way between the engine and, like, you see, like, that little spacing, I guess. The gap, the, yeah. Yeah, like, the small <clears throat> gap, I guess it can squeeze through there. Even though, in real life, there's actually a, another armor plate right there. Yeah. Well, it's not armor, but it's metal, you know. Mhm. Mm but here's the thing, though. Now they're saying that if you're, if the back of the turret gets penned, and the ammunition goes off, if you do not move your turret either 90 degrees or 180, it's gonna yeah. set your engine on fire. So like the fire just spreads, pretty much. Yes, which that would not happen in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But whatever, Gaijin. And their secret documents. Uh, but I do kind of like that now that it is a bit more realistic that if your ammo gets set on fire, you will have to wait for the ammo to be burn out and it does not consume a fire extinguisher. Yeah, I didn't really like how you had to put it out with the FPE. No. Because someone could just shoot your ammo twice and that would be you dead. Yep. It's the equivalent of shooting your engine three times. Yeah, but it's like... Okay, so I did notice this before with the blowout panels. Mm -hmm. When you get hit in the ammo, not all three panels blow out. Really? So I think what they're going to do is they're going to have the, like, those three blowout panels on the back of the Abrams. Yeah. They shoot you in the ammo three times, and then they shoot you there again if you have any ammo left there. Um... There's no automatic system to put it out. Because all your blow-up panels are gone. True. You would have to either drive back to uh, to a capture point to repair. Or just repair right there in the middle of uh, in the battlefield. I would think. I think they should make it like a special skill. Like a special engineering skill for the uh, plates. Like have it like before the M774, but like kind of where, uh, kind of underneath the smoke shell and the and next to the elevation mechanism, mm -hmm. just have a thing that says blowout repair. Okay, I can I see. I think I think that would be reasonable. Yeah, instead of just cool. inst instead of just having parts and you being able to fix it, like make it a whole separate thing. <laughs> so it's like a component, pretty much. Mm-hmm. I'd be okay and, with that. And it doesn't add to your repair cost. That, <laughs> knowing Gaijin, it will. 
because I mean the thing's already nine thousand fully spaded. Jesus. I can only imagine how much they're gonna add. Uh, how much? Uh, I mean, I the mean, elevation, the, the elevation mechanism is only two hundred and twenty-one silver lions. I think they should make it cheap, like the actual parts. I think they should make it sixty-five lions. So, what I'm thinking now is, someone shoots your ammo, you back up, turn your turret, you wait for the fire to go out, then you go to a cap circle, and you know how you have the crew replenish? Mm -hmm. You 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 press a, another button, and it's kind of like crew replenish. You can only do it when you're on a cap circle. You can only repair your blow-up panels when you're on a cap circle. But it's not parts, it's a whole separate thing, like crew replenish. That makes sense, yeah. And so, we're gonna just go straight into that. The first question is, why do some light tanks have various few features while, while others don't? For example, the T-50 doesn't have them, although in reality, for example, it was engaged in reconnaissance on the Leningrad front. The same applies to wheeled vehicles. And the devs responded, Some light tanks at their BR and rank actually have the capabilities of a medium tank, and that's why these new functionalities were not added for them. The T-50 is one of those tanks. Yeah, that makes sense. T-50 is kind of like a medium at its BR. It's like a miniature T-34. That's yeah. how I see it. Yeah, I also see it that way. Because for its rank, it has good armor, good cannon. And if even if played right, it can take out some of Tier 3 tanks. Have you seen Rulo 6000's video on uh, Size Does Not Matter? Mm, I think so. <laughs> yeah, he's just driving around, and I I believe a T-50 just destroying Tigers, Panthers, American tanks. It's fun. Alright, second question. Why does the T-92 have 12 millimeters of armor, yet doesn't get a complete hull destruction when the ATGM Conquerors hits it? Under what criteria does a vehicle have to fall for the mechanic of hull destruction to apply? So they responded with, Since March of this year, the damage model of this tank includes a mechanic of hull destruction for high explosive and heat. As for the criteria, a small mass and armor less than 30 millimeters. I have to agree with the dev side. What, what tank though? The T-92. It's a light American. Oh tank. yeah, that thing. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it kind of makes sense that it doesn't have hole break, cause like its its hole is so weird, you know. Yeah. Like, for I I don't really know how to explain it, but I feel like some some light tanks. If they're designed a certain way, shouldn't have hole break. Like the T ninety two is so curvy, it would be honestly, I think, impossible to hole break something like that. Yeah, and it's very bouncy for not having a yeah. lot of armor. I mean, it's bounced. It's bounced the King Tiger shell several times before, like a long eighty eight. It's bounced that like it's nothing. So. Oh yeah, I once bounced, I believe, an IS six with this tank. But I mean, uh, from the side though, from the side, like. I think they should implement hole break for certain angles. I believe like such a if you hit the front of it, it won't hole break. If you hit the side of it, it'll hole break. I also believe that for open top vehicles such as the ZSU, where if you knock out the whole crew in one swell fell swoop, it should automatically be a hole break. Or even if you hit its ammo or guns, I, it should yeah, count that's as a that's break. a problem I need that I need to address right now about the ZSU. I've hit it with the T ninety five's AP uh, APC BC the the armor piercing ballistic cap shell, mm -hmm. the stock shell, and it hasn't hole broken from the side or from the front. Oh yeah, I mean for some reason, some reason the ZSU doesn't have hole break. Same, same with actually. That's all the ZSUs. I've never hole broken any ZSU, but I've hole broken every other SPAA. Yeah. That has hole break at least. I believe the ZSUs should definitely get hole break. Both of them. All of them. All right. 
Tanks in game are moving forward in the sense that more and more new models are emerging with more sophisticated systems. Will there, in the future, be discussion as to the addition of night sights with thermal imaging? So yeah, we mentioned this in the last one, and they said, yes, it is something we will look at. But there may be some obstacles that may prove insurmountable for ULQ, the compatibility with older graphics card mode. For example, it is very difficult or even impossible to realize the operation of IR or TPB sites on ULQ. I mean, yeah, I could see that being an issue. But uh, I feel like that if ground forces, because I can see why in flight ULQ wouldn't matter as much, but in ground forces, it makes a world of difference. Yeah. And they should make it where all players are on a baseline, where are on the same plateau, where no matter what kind of computer you have, there should always be bushes, and stuff like that. Yeah, and I understand that the removal of bushes decreases the stress on a hard drive, or I mean, not on a hard drive, a graphics card, but it's not fair for players to be hiding in a whole bunch of bushes that have high-end PCs and then be sniped across the map by a player in a low PC that... that to Yeah, the... and plus people that even have good PCs abuse the ultra-low quality settings. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, it's easier to get kills, and it's easier to spot for your team. It gives players such an unfair advantage. I feel like if, you play, if you've played the game previously with high settings, it should be stuck on that setting. Like, you cannot go lower unless either A, you get a new PC, or B, you get a new PC. I don't think you should be able to go lower at all. <laughs> I agree. And and you can go higher in settings if you upgrade, but you just you can't go lower than high settings if you like it should auto detect what you have. Yeah. And whatever setting that's on, you can't go lower than that. I agree. And it should group it would be very difficult, I realize, for this to happen or maybe even impossible with today's current technology. But I feel like People with low-end PCs should play with other low-end PCs, and then people with high-end PCs are only grouped with high-end PCs. There's no... I mean, there can be some in-between, but it would just make... I can see why this won't work, because it would just be harder on Gaijin and for everyone. Oh, I don't think you could even code it, honestly. Yeah. I, like, I... like you'd have to have like a whole separate server that only ultra-low-quality players could access. Yeah, and that would be... A pain. Yes. So, how soon will players... How soon will players see new Japanese ground vehicles? For example, heavy tanks are a necessity. There will be something in update 1.79, but there are no heavy Japanese tanks at the moment, because the tanks themselves are very controversial. In fact, they were generally projects. I mean... If they're going to include the Tiger 105, Tiger 2 105, and the Panther 2, I don't see why they can't add the Japanese heavy tanks. I mean, from from a point, from like a certain point of view, I could understand why they wouldn't add them, because you know it take it would kind of take a while to do those models. But at the same time, like Japan needs some new stuff. Yes. Because they haven't gotten anything new since I think they've been added. I agree. Because right now, Jap Japan, even in 8.7, is getting shat on. By well, every yeah, because they don't have a good APFSDS shell. No. They have the same one as the stock Abrams with a crappy reload. <laughs> yeah. I believe that the next tank they should get should be at least a Type 10. At least, minimum. I honestly don't even know what that is. It's the Japanese... Um, oh, MVP. isn't it like their Leo 2 or whatever? Pretty much, yeah. The ja yeah. The Weeaboo version. <sighs> Alright. Should we expect improvements of the mechanics of... Oh, wait, I already read that one. My apologies. Are there any plans for ja any Japanese ATGMs with second generation rockets? By themselves, no. the Japanese do have ATGMs with second-generation rockets, 
The question as to which vehicles will sport them, that is a determination that will be made at the moment. And I cannot course. say with certainty which one it will be. We're deciding on that. Typical Gaijin just avoiding questions. <laughs> it's pretty much a hard no that they're not going to add. Anything. Yeah, if, if they don't answer the question with a yes or a no, then it's a no. If they're like, oh yeah, we, we just don't know what vehicles, they're just trying to stall. Yeah, it's just just the answer to fend off the wolves, wolves for a minute. Good old Gaijin. Alright. Should we expect the improvements of the mechanics of tank destruction, namely the destruction of the chassis and suspension wheel from hits of a 75 to 152 millimeter shells? In reality, most of the tanks were knocked out of, out of action by the destruction of the chassis. It's one of those ideas that was considered at the beginning of work on ground forces. In principle, we haven't abandoned this idea, and it is still on the table. Wait. So what they're saying is that, you know how currently in game, if you get hit in the hole and it kills one of your uh, crew members, you can still go okay. on? Now I think what they're imp saying is that if your tank gets even pierced from the front, it's going to be knocked out of action. No, that's so... No, that's not okay. No. That would so ruin the game. Because what if you take... What if you take like 12 shots to the driver like you can't you wouldn't be able to do that anymore you get you get hit at all and you're dead no that would not be fun no like i feel like that's the, stupid i feel like let's say they did implement it i feel like that the only mode that it should be included which should be sim yeah that yeah but not keep away, keep it away from realistic and arcade. Agreed. Because <laughs> I don't want anywhere near that. In because it would just kill the fun in RB. Honestly, it really would. Because like you take a shot, oh, you're dead. Even if it, even if it didn't even kill a crew member, you take a shot, you're dead. Yeah. Or if they do do something like that and you take a shot, you just can't move. That would be fine, or if you could uh, repair or something like that. I don't know. I just, I don't think it should be implemented. I think they should just keep it the way it is because it's a lot more fun. Agreed. So. The... And, it, and it would induce camping. It really would, honestly. And it would make... Because people would be like, oh, well, I don't want to get one shot even if they clip me, so I'm just going to, just going to stay hidden. Yes. It would definitely encourage uh, camping and would kill the, it would just kill fun, honestly. Yeah, and plus for certain vehicles, how would you even implement that? Like, for instance, for the T-95, 306 millimeters of frontal armor, you know, no one's going to go through that. But if they hit that little triangular plate on the side, is that going to disable your vehicle? Because there's a 50 millimeter plate uh, spacer. Pardon like, if you, look at the, if you look at the T-28, it's basically just the T-28, but with the extra tracks. So it has that 50 millimeters plus the 111. Yeah, part of me says that it won't destroy the tank, but knowing Gaijin, it will. Oh, uh, except for Russian vehicles. Oh yeah, except for Russian vehicles, especially the IS-6, because, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, because, like, that would, be, that would be, like, that would just completely kill the game. Like, honestly, if they implemented that, everyone would stop playing it. Yeah. Like, even I would stop playing it. I probably wouldn't even play planes, because, well, I suck at planes and my internet's trash. So even when I do get hits, it's just sparks. Yeah. Tanks is all I can do. And if they ruin tanks, then I'm done for. <laughs> You're not going to hop on naval forces? No. <laughs> all right, next question. The game already has several aircraft, about 15 if not more, that have external or additional fuel tanks. Will it be possible to unequip them, or perhaps leave them empty and rely on only internal fuel tanks? At the moment, you can only take enough fuel for 9 minutes or 30 minutes, but these tanks will remain on the aircraft. Also, how do they affect the damage model? To fill or not to fill? 
It is now possible to solve this crisis by one's choice regard regarding quantity of fuel before departure. Those external tanks are filled last. If the tanks are con consequently empty, then they will not affect the DM, and empty tanks will not ignite. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, for once, like, guys. Like, that's what I was thinking at first. Like, you know, why would you even ask that? Because if you don't take max fuel load, you don't have to worry about your external fuel tanks. Exactly. Because that, that would be dumb if your external fuel tanks got filled first. Yes, and even in real life, it would not be practical. It really wouldn't. All right, second, or next question. Will the range of ammunition ammunitions available for turrets be expanded? For example, a set of rounds like incendiary or tracer or armor piercing. Only if necessary. Oh, At the moment, I've, I've heard this. I've heard this before. They they said that they're only going to do ammunition belts that are historical. They're not going to make it to where you can make your own and stuff. Because someone, someone kind of had the same question, like, could we make our own ammunition belts? No, because first of all, that would ruin the balance. It Hella would. hard. It would. And then, you know, like, only historical ammunition types. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a B-17 with full incendiary tracer rounds. True. But what they responded was, only if necessary. At the moment, we have a good setup for rounds, which include almost all types of shell, except perhaps some options that are really not needed for turrets. That's all they responded with. Interesting. It is. I feel like there's more behind what they stated. Alright. In Britain, the Mustang Mark 1A and the Spitfire series had suspended rockets. Also on the P-47 and P-51A, they were a possibility of installing a bazooka and external Hispanic cannons. Are there any options for such external additions weaponry? I, my apology. Are there any options for external additional weaponry? The expansion of options for suspended armaments are in our plans and will be coming to fruition. Not only for aircraft listed above. So I... It sounds like that more planes are gonna get gun pods. Hmm. I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with that. I mean, because not all the not all things had gun pods. Yeah, stuff like the I don't know. Give me one sec. The AG219. Well, technically, that didn't even exist. I don't think. Yeah, that. Because uh... uh, it was it's a player model in the game. Yeah. So have... I think it was I think it was a prototype, and then they were like, you know what, we're just gonna add this into the game because German pilots keep complaining about no planes. True, but the example I was gonna use was like the F4U. That didn't get any gun pods. The F4U uh doesn't need gun pods. No. The only vehicles that I would say that need gun pods for at least the American plane wise is the ones that only have 450 cals already, like the F4F, I think, the first one, and then the F6F first one. Yes, I completely agree. Because And I, I think I think for the F6F, not only should it get 50 cal gun pods, but it should get 20 mil gun pods. 220s and then 450s. I mean, yeah, that would make sense. Game-wise, but historical sense, no. But when does it? It doesn't happen? have the 20 mils. Yeah, I don't believe it does. I think that mostly the Americans stay with the 50 round, fifty cal rounds in the Japanese theater. Uh, that's true. Because right. it would just set them on fire. Exactly. Memes. Paper planes. They get memed. Will there be opportunity to see Junkers EF-131-140 in game? Roughly speaking, the same Ju-287 V2 slash V3, which the Germans never finished during World War II, but completed after its end, came under the control of the USSR. It was quite an exotic vehicle, with swept wings, six jumbo engines, and four tons, four tons of load at speeds over 800 kilometers an hour. 
the aircraft even passed the initial test, though not without some faults. And then they responded with, there are no plans for the Junkers EF-131 or 140 and any upcoming updates. I don't even know what plane they're referring to. Yeah, I don't either. Alright, skipping. Are there any plans for AG-2 air grenades for aircraft defense? At the moment, there are no plans, but there are other interesting plans for, pl for pilots. Hmm. Honestly, that would be pretty cool if they would add that for the SPAA. I, I don't, don't... Like flak rounds? Oh. Like that would be so cool. That would be cool and it would make sense historically and within the game because it's kind of stupid that you would have to land a direct blow to the aircraft to cause some damage. Because in real life all you need is just to set up like a flak, flak barrier. Yeah. That's how, that's how the Germans did it with their 88s. They didn't have to get a direct hit. Exactly. So I feel like that all SPAA, maybe minus the M163. Uh, yeah, of course, like the top tier fast firing SPAA shouldn't get it. Well, maybe just all tank or SPAA with radar. They shouldn't get it. Uh, I don't think the Falcon needs it. Because I don't think the Falcon had flak rounds. True, but considering that the Falcon doesn't even have radar, I think it should get it. Maybe. I know I know vehicles that should get it for sure. The Coelian, the Werbelwind, and the Ostwind. Anything but the Germans, because that would be spammed out in ground forces. Imagine well, I mean, not like they're already not spammed out. True, but imagine you're just driving down the road in Middle East, and then... A Coelian just pops around, blasting you with flak. No, but the flak wouldn't do anything to ground vehicles. That's the thing. Because hmm. it would be purely explosive. And it would only be able to pin like 3 millimeters. Kind of like the air targets rounds on the planes. Mm -hmm. They only have like 2 and 3 millimeters of penetration. That's how it should be. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And then the final and they're set and they're set to go off at a certain distance as well. Yeah, isn't it like the rounds have a timer on them? Yeah, they have explode? like a timer in them connected to a fuse. Yeah. All right. The last question. Well, Breda SAFAT rounds with penet penet pentrites be implemented? And then they responded with, they already included as IAI rounds. I don't know what they're talking about. What are your thoughts? The what? The Breda SAF, the Breda SAFAT bullets with pentrites. I don't even know what those are. Neither do I. I've never heard of these. Like, it sounds Italian with the Breda though. It does. I'm going to look it up real quick. But it wouldn't be for ground forces. It would be for planes. Because the Italians don't have ground forces. Yeah. Well, not yet. I see. So... Yeah, it's mostly talking about the um, Germans. I mean, not the Germans, the Italians. The Italian rounds for aircraft. So it, the air targets isn't enough for them? They need more? I guess. Here's a little side note for people that don't know what the Breda SFAT machine gun it says here, it was designed in 1930 to be equal or superior to weapons of a similar type. It was praised for its reliability and sometimes paired with, with smaller caliber 7.7mm machine gun of the same type. But its chief design flaw was the use of low propellant cartridge for the bullets, which resulted in the weapon being inferior in muscle velocity to weapons of similar val caliber. The American AN-M2 Browning the Russian 
Berizin UB, the Japanese Ho 103, and the German 13mm MG 131. Later in World War II, it was often paired up with the German designed Mauser MG 151 20mm cannon on the, Ma the Machi MC 205 Veltro, Piat G55 Centauro, and the Rick. Rijani RE2005 Sagittario, Sagittario with, a, with as many as three cannons on the fighter post-war. Many Breda SFATs were used in the anti-aircraft roles into the 1970s. Hmm. Mm. They don't need it. They don't need it. I agree. I think, as of right now, the Italian planes are in a good spot. They're very maneuverable, and they have good firepower. Yeah, they have the German 20 mils. Like, that's not enough for you guys? The German 20 mils are like the most OP 20 mils in the game. Yes. Next to the Shavox, but, you know, that's because they're Russian. Because <laughs> bias. Russian bias is the only kind of bias. Really there is, is no other bias. Alright, I'm gonna... So this is going to be the final end, unless the devs release another set of questions in, what, two days? So thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the air. Goodbye. Hey guys, thank you for watching this channel's very first video. Tell us your thoughts you had and comment them below. We're excited to be adding more videos in the future, so stay tuned.